Welcome back you guys, and we've talked about surprising players and disappointing players in the past month or so, but what about players that have changed their play style or their role was changed this season? Their roles could have changed because of roster changes or the coaching staff making an emphasis on certain things. So let's talk about these players, but before we get started, I'd like to thank the Amino app for sponsoring this video. Amino has tons of communities for every hobby, and that includes the Hardwood Amino community with over 100,000 basketball fans. Right when you open the app, you can click the bottom of the screen to see where people are browsing. You can read blog posts about the historical significance of James Harden's performances in the last month, or get in on one of the quizzes about the history of Larry Bird or Kobe Bryant. Those quizzes can get interesting with the short timer. There's other things cool to scroll through and learn. Check out the wiki section for lots of NBA history where you can read about Suns guard DeAnthony Melton all the way to the 1993-1994 Bulls team without Michael Jordan. I made a post about the 6th man of the year award that I want you guys to respond to. You guys can download the app on your phone by clicking the link in the description and searching my profile name Kane Loves Cali. First on the list we got Devin Booker, I'm sure everybody watching has seen Devin Booker and you all know how much damage he can do as a scorer. We've watched him go off as a pull up shooter, he's gone off as a standstill catch and shoot player, and as a driver. We're at the point where we can expect Booker to put up 25 points a night, but because of circumstances in Phoenix, Booker has had to burden another role in addition to his scoring. During this 2018-2019 season, Booker has taken his playmaking to a higher level due to individual improvements and because of Phoenix's point guard rotation. They don't have anybody that you can really trust over Booker to handle the ball in close games, so Book has been the main creator. He's averaging a career-high 7 assists per game, which is up from the 5 he averaged last season. Like I mentioned earlier, Booker has made it very tough on defenses because of his ability to play off the ball and come off screens. Having another competent guy to dribble the ball and make passes will only make it easier for him to do work off the ball. It's always good to have multiple playmakers on the floor. The Suns have some young guards in Melton and Okobo to develop, but they're not ready yet. The question for Phoenix going forward is, how much do you want to use Devin Booker at the one long term? I think having him develop this point guard role now is good for the long term if Phoenix eventually becomes a playoff team, but they still need some type of average point guard. You don't want to put that all on Booker. Next on the list we have Brooke Lopez, and Brooke is a fantastic example of someone who's changed their game to fit the new style of NBA and remain relevant. On this channel, we've talked about plenty of big men that could not adjust their game to the current NBA climate, where it is preferred that your team's 7 foot center can stretch the floor from the corners and at the break. Well, Brooke Lopez is somebody who isn't going to get phased out of the NBA and is going to secure another long term deal in 7 months. He is currently on a one year, $3 million deal on the Bucks, which is a bargain to say the least. In most of the years with the Nets, he was a back to basket post up center who could hit the mid range shot. He shot the three in his last season with the Nets, but it was not a priority. On the Lakers, he also shot the three a bit, but he still was getting his post touches. On the Bucks, you rarely see him get into the post at all. He is a full time stretch five that is taking 70% of his shots at the three point line. Having Brooks spot up to open up space for Giannis, Middleton, Bledsoe, and Brogdon is an emphasis by head coach Mike Budenholzer. About a month and a half ago, I mentioned that Brook had made more three-pointers than Klay Thompson at one point in the season. Well, we're almost at the three-month mark of the regular season, and he's still keeping up. Brook and Klay are tied for 95 threes made on the season, while Brook has played two less games. Brook is shooting 37% from three on seven attempts per game, and is ninth out of all players in three-pointers made. Did anyone else think this was going to happen? I know I didn't. It's kind of weird how normal it feels watching this goofy 7 footer just pull threes from places where big men generally don't move out to on the court. It's gotten so ridiculous that whoever is guarding him tries so hard to get up in his shooting pocket that they will overplay Brook so hard he'll drive past them and get a layup or dunk it. It's kind of funny watching Brook drive to the rim because you don't want to help over because you got other shooters to worry about, plus who's going to try to help once he's that close to the rim. Next up we have Justice Winslow who has made a big change this year. Now if you haven't been paying too much attention to the Miami Heat and you randomly turn on one of their games, you might be confused as to why they don't have a traditional point guard in the lineup and you see Justice Winslow driving and kicking and bringing up the ball. The Heat went into the season without a backup point guard. 
Justice has been the primary ball handler in the past, but once Goran Dragic went down with an injury, head coach Eric Spolstra made it official to the media about two to three weeks ago that Justice will be the starting point guard. This season, Justice is displaying that he's more than someone who does the dirty work on defense and spots up at the three-point line while Dragic and Waiters handle the ball. He's somebody that can grab a rebound, push the pace, make a quick break, or set up the offense. Winslow is averaging a career high in assist percentage and usage rate, and he's probably exceeded everybody's expectations at this point. The Heat have played well in December, picking up a lot of wins to push them into the playoff race, and part of that is due to Justice being a trustworthy player. Now, is he perfect at point guard? No, he still makes bad turnovers and isn't the greatest finisher, but what he's doing is good for his development. Justice just signed a three-year, $39 million deal, so seeing him make a jump somewhere else outside of standstill threes and defense is good. We know he's fine playing in the background, but having an extra guy to be a playmaker is nice when things break down. The real question is how sustainable is this long term and what's going to happen once everyone comes back healthy or the roster changes? Is point justice something we're going to see long term? When DeRozan and Lowry were the two best players on the Raptors for five seasons, they switched off being 1A and 1B options on offense. The last two seasons together there was a clear difference between Lowry and DeRozan's shot attempts, favoring DeRozan, but between the 2014 and 2015 seasons, their shot attempts were almost similar. In the 2018-19 season, there's even a larger disparity between shot attempts between the Raptors' two best players because of many things, but mainly due to Kawhi Leonard being a clear number one option. At the age of 32, Lowry has moved into more of a quote-unquote true point guard role. He is taking the least amount of shots in his career per game, averaging the highest assists per game of his career, as well as the highest assist rate of his career, not to mention this season is his lowest ever in usage percentage since 2011 when he was in Houston. Besides the Kawhi Leonard factor, there is the development of Pascal Siakam which has taken away some shot attempts. Lowry has been a part of the resurgence we've seen from Serge Ibaka on offense. He's gotten Ibaka a lot of easy shots in the pick and roll with his passing. Kyle has been injured and slumping lately, but he has shifted his role this year into something that I think will translate better into the playoffs as long as he's healthy. This is probably my favorite version of Lowry since that 2016 season. When Lowry is timing perfect passes to Ibaka and Valanciunas, it keeps the team engaged on defense. He's not the best player on the Raptors, obviously, but he's the most important playmaker because he's the only one capable of getting everyone not named Kawhi in rhythm on offense. Back on the Utah Jazz, Gordon Hayward was the primary ball handler on a 51-win Jazz team that made it to the second round of the playoffs before getting swept by the Golden State Warriors. As the primary shot creator next to George Hill and Joe Ingles, Hayward was the guy leading the team in shots every night, he was second in assists, and first in three-pointers made per game. He was an all-star, got a massive deal from the Celtics in free agency, and was expected to be a big part of their future. But unfortunately, due to injury circumstances, Gordon is not one of the primary ball handlers on the team at the moment. It feels kind of bad talking about this because of the injury, but you know, whenever an all-star player goes from averaging 20 points per game, and in less than two years, he's a glorified role player off the bench with flashes here and there, we gotta discuss it. At the start of the year, the mesh between him, Jalen Brown, and Jason Tatum wasn't working as some thought in the preseason. Adding Kyrie and Horford, there you have a lot of skilled players on offense, but as a collective, not everyone was able to get into rhythm. About a month into the season, he was moved to the bench and there have been some flashes here and there. Replacing Hayward and Brown with Smart and Morris has brought more balance to the starting lineup and rotation for the beginning of the second and fourth quarter. Hayward is not leading the team in shot attempts or three-pointers made. I know I'm not the only one paying attention to this, but I am interested to see what Hayward is playing like in April. What is he going to look like in a hypothetical playoff series against Indiana or Milwaukee? Because if he can get to 80% of what he was against the Timberwolves last night in the East playoffs, that'll be really important for the series. It'll make it easier for the Celtics. And that's it for me, man. It's been interesting to see these players switch up their roles a bit this season. Obviously, they still play their games, but it's a little bit different from last year. The ones I wasn't expecting was full-time Point Justice and 7-foot Clay Thompson. I really hope Phoenix finds a point guard soon. It would have been interesting to see Booker and De'Aaron Fox play together if they drafted him at the fourth pick. My next video will either be on Anthony Davis' situation with the Pelicans or on the history between LeBron James and his head coaches, so be on the lookout for that.